thank you. So what I'd like to talk about is uh, rapamycin. Um, and so how long did you say you've been taking rapamycin? It was... I've been taking it for over five years. As I started, in, uh, so I, like, I'd say five and a half years. I started in like January, 2016. So mm -hmm. I make it five and a half years. Wow, okay. And so c can you talk about the dose and the schedule again? I mean, you did, you did talk about the, the schedule. So we, we're trying to avoid activating mTORC2, right? Just activate mTORC1. So we don't want to reduce mTOR2. We don't want to, mTOR2 is already, we don't want to deactivate mTOR2. We don't want to reduce it. Right. So I basically, I never use it any more frequently than once a week. Right. So I, depending on the different people and like what's involved, I might use any dose starting at one milligram to a usual more typical dose of six milligrams, but I might use any dose, but whatever dose I use, it's, once a week. Uh, it's never, it's always just once a week. Although recently I've been taking it myself every other week, but I take, but I double the dose. So I double the dose and I take it every other week because I'm taking the, the satin every other week. And I don't think, I don't want to take them each at the same week. So one weekend I take the rapamycin and one weekend I take the satin. So that is basically an uh, innovation that Blagger Scaloni came up with. He came up with the idea of using a real high dose, but then it should be used every other week. In other words, every other week is, ba is basically five half-lives. Mm -hmm. it's, like it's 65 hours. Five half-lives is the theoretical zero level before your new dose. So that's the idea of uh, five half-lives at once a week is two and a half half-lives. Once a week, two and a half half-lives, if you take a fairly low dose, gets you down to a very low dose, low, low blood level by the end of the week. But if you're taking a real high dose, seems to me you have to wait two weeks and have a full five half-lives to get down to a zero level before your new dose. So that, that's the whole idea. You don't want to have a continuous uh, because rapamycin interferes with making mTOR2. Uh, how it does that is your body can't assemble. It can make all the little parts that make mTOR2, but it can't assemble them in the presence of a high dose of rapamycin because rapamycin competes with the places that they go. It's like a, a competition. So that's why in transplant medicine, that's why they give it every day because transplant medicine, they must knock out mTOR2 to interfere with the function of lymphocytes. They're mm. trying to sort of like, you know, because uh, in transplant medicine, they're using it as basically a biologic poison. They want to make the lymphocytes so deranged in their function that they will not recognize a foreign kidney as foreign. That's very messed up lymphocytes. But in order mm. to do that, they need to have maintain a continuous suppression of mTOR2. As soon as mTOR2 comes back online, right, if the, if the transplant patients stop taking rapamycin for like two weeks, they would immediately reject the kidney. The, the, mm. uh, probably just like one week would be enough that they stop for like one week, the mTOR2 would come back online it become to up to a functional level. The lymphocytes would become back and functional. They would look around and say, well, what's this foreign kidney doing here? And it would be immediately rejected. So the transplant patients, they have to take that mycin every day for the rest of their life. So they're in trouble because if they have any side effects, they can't stop. Well, transplant, like anti-aging people, if they have a side effect, they just sort of like stop where we can like it clears up. Right. So speaking of side effects, so if we didn't want to use rapamycin, yeah, if we don't want to use rapamycin to inhibit TOR, so we can use other mechanisms, right? Uh, like you could, use, you could use caloric restriction, or like uh, you could use, uh, basically in studies, they show that 40% caloric restriction was like as efficient and as effective as 
rapamycin in the reducing is reducing uh, mTOR. So uh, 40% caloric restriction is a hard road to go, yeah. but it would, be, it would be equally effective. Or uh, other effective things that would be effective is uh, just intermittent fasting. Other things that are effective is just eating less. Uh, and um, so those are sort of like the sort of like caloric restriction, intermittent fasting, eating less, eating less proteins, like uh, they're sort of like real good at reducing mTOR. And the other thing that's very good at reducing mTOR is just not being insulin resistant. Like insulin is the number one stimulant of mTOR. So mm -hmm. for all people who are overweight, they become insulin resistant. When you're insulin resistant, you have high levels of insulin. High levels of insulin, because it's high levels of mTOR, high levels of mTOR are now driving all the age related diseases. So it's real important for people to be insulin sensitive. And the best way to do that is not be 50 pounds overweight, but to be about the same weight you were when you were 20 years old, when most people were very fit. Right. So also, you people should have their weight. And the simplest test for everyone to do is just a tape measure, measure your waistline. Your waistline should not be more than half of your height. So if you're 70 inches tall, five foot 10, 70 inches tall, you should have a 35 inch waistline, not based on the pant size, but based on a, tape, a real tape measure across your belly button. Across the belly button. Okay, that's good. So I believe I heard you say that one of the ways to keep, uh, to keep um, mTOR down was to restrict methionine. Is that oh, correct? Yeah. I don't think just keeping mTOR down. I would say methionine was something that affected the mitochondria. Ah, so okay. you, could, you could affect, in other words, uh, so like Baha, who was working on this, he said that in his studies, he showed that caloric restriction, protein restriction, methionine restriction, or rapamycin would all have a similar effect on the mitochondria, reducing the amount of ROS developed uh, and that was having an impact on the mitochondria. Now, methionine is very, very interesting in that methionine is what's called Codo number one for all proteins produced by eukaryocytes. So what that means is a eukaryocyte is anything with the nucleus, so anything that's an advanced organism. And whenever they make a protein, and spot number codo number one is spot number one. So you're like the proteins is like a string of like amino acids, and then spot number one always goes with methionine. Then they sort of like all sorts of other they can put with any they could have any other sort of like amino acids or the 20 amino acids in any other sequence, but they always put methionine when they're making a protein in spot number one. So for that reason, your body needs to, it's going to, if it's going to make a protein, it's going to need methionine. So if it's on low levels of methionine, it will just figure that's the same as caloric restriction. It like fools the body into thinking it's like in a, a stage of caloric restriction just because you don't have a lot of methionine in your diet. And methionine turns out it's in all the animal products, but it's, it's in much lower in a lot of vegetable products. Like vegetables, they have what we call post-translational modifications, which means after they make the protein, they chop out the methionine. Now they're low in methionine. Basically, it's a vegan diet. The vegan, the, the, the typical vegan diet is very low in methionine. Right. So just one question on that. So I thought uh, that leucine was like the main amino acid that uh, mTOR listened for. Yeah, that would be, that could be stimulating mTOR. So like leucine could be like, uh, some of the branched amino acids could be stimulating mTOR uh, to go higher. In other, right. words, proteins, in other words, proteins sort of like can stimulate it. Like mTOR is sort of like, is, well, it's basically uh, a thing sensing whether an organism should grow. Hmm. And so growing meant 
like a good availability of things that needed. And that was like I was looking for. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.